Uh, if God's been good to you, I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet. We've been here for 101 years, and I believe it's time to celebrate yeah. what God has done for us. He's been so good to oh, us. Yeah. Come on, clap those hands. Hallelujah. God has been so good to me. I cannot tell it all. God has been so church we want to hear the word we want to hear what the lord is going to tell us today take your notes get your pen and paper off because i believe at least i know there is a word from the lord from our pastor we get excited when we hear him we want to come early make sure we get a good seat to hear him because it's going to be something directly from the lord let's read let's stand and say praise the lord preach the word to our pastor praise the lord Preach the word, Bishop Charles L. Smith. Woo! Father God, this is a special day that we have today. 101 years, and we are still standing. We're not standing because of our goodness, but we're standing because of your goodness. We're not here because we planned this and we carried out our plan, but we are here because 
This is the Lord's doings, and it is marvelous in our eyes. I pray, Lord, for the continuance of Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church, that it will continue on and on and on. Hallelujah. We know that you're able to take it as far as you want it to go. We've been through many tests, many trials, many things have happened to this church, but it's still standing, hallelujah. Many things, many storms, many winds, many floods have come against Zion, but it's still standing, hallelujah. We want to give you honor. We want to give you glory for your great and mighty works which you have done. Continue to let your spirit be in this church. Let healing be in this church. Let deliverance be in this church. Let salvation be in this church. Hallelujah. Utamasa, those that come to Zion, help them to feel the presence of the Lord. Bless this word that comes from your servant today. Use us for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our verse that we want to, verses that we want to choose for our subject is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, and said, to whom coming as a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. And in accordance with that, or along with that, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I say also that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Our subject for today is 101 years and still standing. 101 years and still standing. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Hallelujah. God did it, hallelujah. I said God did it. I do not take away from any other ministers that have stood in this pulpit and have ministered to the people. A good work has been done by all of them. But on the bottom line, on the bottom line, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise God for choosing me as a pastor for this church. Hallelujah. There are many people who wanted this church. There are many people who even went to Bishop Bowers and others and asked for to try out for the church. Hallelujah. There were a lot of them who had other reasons for wanting the church other than just to be the pastor of the church. Hallelujah. But God chose me, his servant. Hallelujah. To be the successor of a great man who had done a great work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I give God thanks 
for choosing a person like me to do this work. It is a good work. It is a great work. It is a glorious work to see what God has done in Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church in the last 17 years. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was thinking upon the word of the Lord that what would I say about 101 years and still standing? <laughs> and the Lord said, tell them the four reasons why it is still standing. Tell them why it is still standing. Hallelujah. And these are the four reasons why it is still standing. Number one, it's the construction of the church. Hallelujah. That is found in Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. The second reason that is standing is because underneath of this church is a foundational rock. And that rock is Jesus. The third reason why it is still standing is because there's a living stone in the church. And that stone is Jesus. Hallelujah. And the fourth reason that it is still standing is because Zion is a spiritual house. Hallelujah. And that is 1 Peter 2, 5 and 6. And the living stone is 1 Peter 2 and 4. The foundational rock is Matthew 16, 18a. And finally, 100 years and still standing is Matthew 16, 18b, and Isaiah 28 and 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those are the four reasons why we are, amen, still in existence why God is helping us, why God is healing soul, why God is saving soul. It's because of these four reasons. The construction of the church, the foundational rock of the church, the living rock underneath the church and in the church, hallelujah. And finally, Zion is a spiritual house. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is not a cafe. This is not a booze joint. This is not a speakeasy joint. This is a spiritual house. Yeah. Hallelujah. This house was built by God himself. Hallelujah. He didn't build all of the edifice that were setting in, but he built the church. He died on the cross for every one of us. He gave his life for the church. He said, I want a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. I don't want a dirty church. I don't want a church full of sin and backslidden members. I don't want the devil to be controlling the minds of the people. But I want Zion to be a spiritual house. Hallelujah. A spiritual house. A house where praise goes forth. A praying people. A singing people, a worshiping 
people in the house. It's not just the building, but it's the church that's in the building that I am looking for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I want the church to be built the right way. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 through 22, hallelujah, we ask you to turn to that scripture first, and then we will preach what I already told you, the four reasons why we're still here. Hallelujah. Verse 19 said, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Hallelujah. Everybody in God's church is a special person. <laughs> Hallelujah. We may have different ethnic backgrounds and we may have different ways of looking at things. We may have different educations, but every one of you that's listening to the sound of my voice is special in the eyes of God. We all belong to the household of God. Hallelujah. We are his children. We are his saints. We are the sanctified ones. We have been adopted into his family. We have cried out, Abbi Father, Abbi Father, you are my Father. Hallelujah. We belong to him. We are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You belong to the church. You're no more a stranger and a foreigner, but a fellow citizen with the saints and of the household of God. You're a part of God's household. Hallelujah. Number 20, the construction of the church. This church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ himself is the cornerstone. This church is built upon the apostolic faith. This is an apostolic church. We may have other churches that believe in other tenets of faith, but our tenets of faith are recorded in the scriptures. We our basic doctrine is upon the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. We are a part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not separated from Christ and we are not Hallelujah, in a category away from Christ, but Christ is in us and we are in Christ. Christ is in our hearts. He has set up his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of his people. Hallelujah. We belong to the kingdom of heaven. We belong to the kingdom of God. We're not just nobody hey, trying to tell everybody about somebody. Hallelujah. We are somebody. We are peculiar treasure in the eyes of God, and we belong to the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. There is no ethnic group, 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 groupies. 
There is no separation of color or education or physical background. You can come from the country and I can come from the city, but we're still brothers and sisters in the Lord. You could only got to the sixth grade and I went to high school and graduated, or you could have went to college. Hallelujah. But we're still brothers and sisters in the Lord. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Hallelujah. No big eyes and little you. No small people and big people, but just the people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the foundation and the infrastructure and the things that are in our building, in the church that has been constructed, the spiritual house of God that has been constructed is based on the Bible. Hallelujah. Even in my teaching and preaching, I like to preach the word and explain the word. I, I don't like to get into philosophy and all those other things, but I really want to get to the place where we just hear the word, read the word, digest the word, and, and go on and do the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. The construction of our church is unique because it's not built of mortar and cement and nails, <laughs> but it is built on spiritual principles and commandments and ordinances and statutes that are found in the Bible. Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church is still standing because it's an apostolic church. Based upon apostolic principles lived by the people of God in this church. We encourage everybody to obey the Bible do what the Bible says. Live by the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. And underneath of the church is a foundational rock. And that rock is Jesus. Jesus said, after Peter had said to him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said in verse 18, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. Hallelujah. According to some religions, they believe that their faith came because of Peter. They believed that he was the first pope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I'm going to get cards and letters and telegrams, but I got to tell it like it is. They're the ones that killed Peter. They're the ones that crucified him upside down. How could he become a pope and a martyr at the same time for standing for religious beliefs that were based on Jesus Christ? I got to move. I got four things to do, and I got to get it done. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, Thou art Peter. The word Peter in the Greek is spelled P-E-T-R-O-S. It is number 4074. 
and it is pronounced Petros. It means a piece of the rock. And it also means a rock that is larger than a stone. There's another reference for that in 3037. Hallelujah. Jesus is not saying, Thou art, you know, the rock that I'm going to build my church on, but I'm going to build my church on your revelation. God gave you a revelation and so you could tell the disciples and answer the question that I ask you, whom do men say that I am? You could tell them I am the Christ. I'm the son of the living God. I am the savior of the world. I am the one that came to bring salvation and healing and deliverance from the whole world. Hallelujah. No, Peter, you're not the rock for the church. We need a bigger rock for the church. He said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was talking about himself. The Greek word for this rock is number 4073 and it is spelled P-E-T or A or Petra. It is a mass of rock or a foundational rock. And Jesus is the only one that is able to have a rock large enough for the whole church to sit down on. Now, Gibraltar is a big rock, but it ain't big enough for the church. This church started out with 120 souls. It elevated to another 3,000 souls. And finally, there were 5,000 souls that got saved. 8,120 people were saved in the book of Acts in the first five chapters. But how would he uphold a church that was 101 years old. How would he hold a church that was founded in 33 AD? How would he hold everybody up and support a church this large who would have problems, who would have difficulties, who would have sickness, who would have trouble, who would have tests, who would have trials? How am I going to help all those people? You're going to need a big rock for the church. <laughs> Zion is still standing because it is not based on anything but Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground around me is sinking sand. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glad I'm standing on a rock that will not give away. I'm standing on a rock that will not let me down. Hallelujah. And when I get weary, the psalmist said, when my heart is overwhelmed, Mota. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter for me. Ooh. 
Lord, I can't make it without you. Lean on me when you're not strong. Lean on me when you feel like you can't make it. Lean on me when you get tired. Just lean back and trust in God. Lean back and believe in God. Lead me to that rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me. Hallelujah. That's why Zion is still standing. Yes, we've had good leadership. Yes, we've had a lot of the apostolic doctrine taught to us. Many of us know memory verses. They don't even have to open up the Bible. They can quote them. Because they were taught. If I walk up to you and point to you and ask you to quote a certain scripture, you better know what it says. Oh, Lord. I love it. I love it. I don't know whether our guests have got here yet, but I want to finish these four reasons why we're still standing. <laughs> Number three is we have a living stone in the church and his name is Jesus. He's living here. He is not in the grave. He is not in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. He is not in Palestine and Jerusalem. Because he said, it is not possible for this grave to hold me down. Go ahead. <laughs> Put the nails in my hands. Laugh at me where you stand. Go ahead. Put me in the grave. But in three days, I shall rise again. Because ain't no grave you're going to hold my body down. First Peter 2 and 4 said to whom the builders did not want. They chose to kill him rather than to serve him. They chose to get him out of the way so they could carry on because there were too many people who loved Jesus and did not pay any attention to them. Hallelujah. He said in verse 4, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. I came to tell you today that Jesus is still alive. <laughs> he didn't just come in 1920 and leave in 21. 2021. I think I'll visit with them and get a church started. Then I'm going to take off and let them be on their own. But every step of the way for the last 101 years, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No, I am with you always. 
even to the end of the earth. We came all the way with our minds stayed on Jesus. Every time we need him, he was there because he was alive. We didn't have to cry out, oh God, come down from heaven, or oh God, come up from the grave. But he was nigh unto us. Even in your heart. Hallelujah. He made intercession for us. To the eternal spirit, hallelujah. We are not disconnected from Christ. We are with him continually. Not just in the church building, not just here today for the anniversary, but when we leave here, we take him with us. We, oh, hallelujah. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. Jesus. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. We're still here because the living stone is in Zion. Hallelujah. The stone that brings us life is in Zion. The stone that brings healing is in Zion. It's in the apostolic church. No matter what the name is, it's in the apostolic church. Jesus lives and Jesus survived in the apostolic church. He's the one that gives life to the church. We can't sing without him. We can't preach without him. We can't walk without him. We can't talk without him. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. We could not breathe without him. Shut up. That's why we're still here, because we got a living stone in the church. Hallelujah. Ooh, I shout out. How you know, Elder, well, every now and then, I can feel him moving. Hallelujah, Bishop Daniel. Every now and then. Sometimes I just sit there and look and Pray, meditate, but every now and then, I can feel the spirit moving. Every now and then, I can feel that little wheel turning on the inside. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is alive. The fourth reason that we are here and still here after 101 years is because Zion is a spiritual house. And I know greater Emmanuel is as well. Amen. But I'm preaching about what happened here. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our church is a spiritual house, and we are lively stones in a spiritual house. (laughs) 
Somebody said I said and wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. I wanted to be quiet, but I couldn't be quiet. I wanted to sit down, but I couldn't sit down. I wanted to keep my mouth shut, but I couldn't keep my mouth shut because every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. Every time I meditate upon him, I feel good. Every time I say his name, I feel good. I feel good. I feel electricity running around. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel it all over me. Woo. That's the reason why we're still standing, because we're praising God. We're giving him glory. We're giving him honor. Our church is called a singing church. We're singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and we're giving glory to him. We're giving thanksgiving to him. Jesus said, as long as you want me there, I'll be there. If you change your mind and you don't want me no more, I'll go to another place where I can have some praise. I'll go to another place where I can have some worship. I'll go to another place where they're on fire for God. Fire began in 1920, and it's still going on. Still going on. <laughs> it ain't went out yet. Now, if the fire of Thanksgiving goes out, we're in trouble. If we lose our love for God, we're in trouble. If we set him aside and replace him with formalism, we are in trouble. <laughs> Psalm 100 said, oh, hallelujah, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Get ready for church before you come to church. When you get in the house, begin to praise him. You're a lively stone in the building. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Don't take all his blessings for granted, but be thankful unto him and bless his name. Lord, I just want to thank you for your healing. Thank you for your divine provision. Thank you for your spiritual provision. I just want to thank you for being so good to you, 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 and you, and me, and me. My praise shall be to him. My lips shall praise him. My voice shall praise him. My hand shall praise him. So be quiet. You're making too much noise. 
No, if, if this ain't enough noise, we'll make some more. <laughs> if ain't, this ain't good enough, we'll make some more noise. We'll let them hear it out in the parking lot about how good God is. We'll turn the sound up and let them sit in their cars and hear how good our God is. He has done great things. He has brought us out. He has lifted us up. He has sustained us by the right hand of his mighty power. That's why we're still here, because we still got worship. We still have praise. We still have thanksgiving in the church. We want to feel God's presence when we come to the church. We want to be healed when we come to the church. We want to be saved when we come to the church. We want to have his power. Saturate our soul when we come to the church. I didn't come to church to see who was here. I didn't come to check out and see who made it today and who didn't make it. But I came to meet with God. I was waiting on the living stone to revive me. He's been reviving the church for 101 years during the bad times, during the low times, when things weren't going right, when the devil was coming against the church with all his might. The church had a living stone in the church, in the church, in the church, in the church, a place where you could come and find relief from the winds of adversity and the tests and trials that were coming against your soul. What a sweet, swelling savor we find when we come into God's house. When the saints have prayed and the saints have fasted and have invited his presence into the church, when we have church tomorrow, Lord, show up. You make it. You be there. You help us. You revive us. You strengthen us for next week. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Lord, revive us again. Matthew 16 and 18 said, I say unto thee, Hallelujah. Finally, I say unto thee, Hallelujah. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And then there's a semicolon after that. In the last sentence, he said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. Hallelujah. Now, the word prevail is number 2729, and it means, number one, to over power. There's nothing that can overpower the Lord's church. 
It also means to triumph, triumph over God's church. There's no satanic force. There's no demons. Even if Beelzebub came in person, and said, I'm the prince of devils, I'm taking over now. Jesus would tell him, loose here, Satan, get away from this place. It does not belong to you, it belongs to me. This is my church. This is my church. This is the one I died for. This is the one that I shed my blood for. So I could have a glorious church without spot, without wrinkle, or anything such thing. Hallelujah. Prevail means to have victory with great success. That's not going to happen. Third meaning is to celebrate victory over the church. That ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen, y'all. Hallelujah. Beelzebub is strong. The devil is strong in his area. But if he gets outside of his area, he has to deal with Jesus. Because he said, and the gates of hell, the gates of death and the grave, shall not be able to prevail against this church. Hallelujah. Isaiah 28 and 16, in my conclusion, oh Lord, I hope you all got the message. I wanted the people to come and celebrate with us, but they didn't come. Or if they are here, they have to wait now. Because I got to finish this. Isaiah 28 and 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. What kind of stone is it? It's a tried stone. <laughs> uh, I love this. It's a precious cornerstone. It's a sure foundation. It will never give away from under you. It will always be there. And he that believeth shall not make haste. Hallelujah. He's not going to be rash in his actions. He's not going to get real fast in his motion. And he's not going to have an eagerness to move, he's going to wait on the Lord until the Lord says move. Hallelujah. Where do we go from here? Well, I'm glad you asked. We must, I already preached this, go forward. Where God wants us to go is on the other side of the Red Sea. It's not on this side, but it's on the other side. 
The promised land is on the other side. Paul said also in the book of Philippians, I believe chapter 4, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things which are before I press toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Not that I've already apprehended it. I don't have it yet, but I'm trying to get it. My eyes are not on what is in the earth. I want to wear the earth and the material world as a loose garment. I can drive a new car and not get excited. I can have a new house and not get excited. I can get a wardrobe and not get excited because my mind is not on wardrobe. My mind is not on houses. My mind is not on 2022s. My mind is made up. My heart is fixed. I want to do what the Lord said do. Woo, woo, woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know the winds is going to blow. Rains is going to come. Flood is going to come. But my house is not built on shabby things. When I stand behind this pulpit, I'm standing on a solid foundation that will not give away under me. And no matter what I have to go through, I'm not asking for it, but Lord, give me grace to go through because I know if I serve you in an acceptable way, I'm not going down. I'm not going to be destroyed, but I'm going up to meet you in the air. Hallelujah to God. Be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things he has done. 101 years and still standing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.